Welcome, we're about to go into permanent waves. Permanent waves is when you take predominantly straight hair to a curl reformation. And the active ingredient generally is ammonium thioglycolate. There's so many other different types that you're gonna learn in class, but this is the most common for normal to resistant hair. The first thing that we're gonna do when we do a permanent wave is section. It's very important to section for control. There's so many different types of sectioning techniques, right? There is the nine section. And there is the eight section. There's more, but one that you need to get accustomed to is also that bricklay. Bricklay doesn't require any sections, and that's when you just lay them like bricks. All right? What we're gonna do is a nine section so that we can have full control over the client's hair. The best way to do these sectioning is by using a rod to get the width of each of your sections. If you get your first good section in, the rest of it is easy breezy. All you have to do is take your rod, place it, look in the mirror, place it right there in the middle of the head and part. When you part, keep the comb on the scalp and then lift it out and then you won't be parting forever. Let's do it again on this side. Keep it on the scalp, split it, and there goes your part. So that's the width. Now let's go into the length. If you take time to do your first section really nice, the rest of it, I promise, is going to be very, very easy. Or I should say simple. Now, remember when I said if you do the width and the length really, really perfectly, you don't even really need this anymore. All you got to do is follow it. Here we go. Down the side. It's your section. Here we go. Down the side. That's our third section. Now, again, since we already have this pretty perfectly, all I gotta do is follow it. The most challenging section is that middle section. Why? Because that's when the client's head gets a little wider, a lot more hair to control. But just follow it down and it's going to create your next three sections. And you're going to go all the way to the nape, the nape area. I'm going to come on this side. Separate it. Follow it down to that nape area.
when you take the time to do really clean, nice sections, it makes it very easy to put in those rods. More simple. All right, now let's tackle that middle section. Let's see how we do. Ah, oh, pretty smooth. And now, all you have to do is follow it down. One, two, and three. And you know, the nape gets really narrow. Let's see if I can tilt the head forward so we can see that. All right, and there you have it. You have quickly put in your nine sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right. Now it's time to prepare for wrapping the hair. When you wrap hair, you're gonna use what is called end papers. End papers help us to seal the ends as we wrap the hair on the rods. I'm gonna take out a nice chunk. These days they have boxes and um, applicators where when you pull it out, the next one pops up, right? Well, we don't have that today. So let me show you a nice trick or technique to lift them up. Okay. So you put your stack down, you take the bottom of your comb and you twist it. When you twist it, it opens up those end papers so you can easily grab them. Next, we are going to work from the interior in wrapping the rods to the exterior. The reason why you always wanna work from the interior to the exterior is because you don't wanna block yourself. If you work here, then you might have to force rods in the section. If you work from the interior, you don't have to force rods anywhere. You work in, out. All right. Let's get started. We're about to wrap the rods in our nine section. It's very important that you keep the hair extremely wet so that you have control over the hair when you're wrapping it on the rods. Your subsections need to be the width of your tool. So you place that right at the top of the head or at the top of your section and you part it according to the tool width. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your end papers. There's a few ways to use your end papers. I'm gonna show you both. One way is single. That's where you take one end paper and you wrap the rods. The next one that I'm gonna show you is bookend. That's when you take one paper, you fold it over, slide it like so, and you wrap it. The next way that you can use your end papers is known as a double flat wrap. That's when you take one 
and make sure your hair is really wet because see how it's sliding off the hair? That means your hair is not wet enough. So you want to make sure, don't work against yourself. Wet the hair down so that, boom, you don't have to work against yourself. All right, this is a double flat wrap. Slide it up and wrap the hair. So the three wrapping techniques is a single, which is one paper. A bookend is where you take one and fold it over. Or a double flat wrap, which is one on the back, one on the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it out. And make sure you start wrapping paper before you start wrapping hair so you don't have those fish hooks. And I'm going to rock it back and forth. Rocking it back and forth allows one side to not be loose or tighter than the other. And you wrap it going down, just like so. Take your finger, hold it, make sure that your band unravels, and then you connect it and attach it. Make sure that band is on top. Sits just like so. Let's do that again. Your base is the width of the tool. Make sure the hair is wet. This time I'm going to do a book wrap. So you take it, fold it over, slide it up. Make sure you start wrapping paper before you start wrapping hair so you have full control. And you rock it back and forth so that one side is not tighter or looser than the other. You wrap it going down. Take your finger and hold, unravel your band and attach it on the other side. All right. You're going to do this all over the head and then you're going to move on to your solution. All right. So we have completely wrapped the head, right? I'm going to just moisten it up a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my protective cream and apply it around the perimeter of the hairline. This is to prevent from any type of chemical sensations, also known as burns. Get the ears. Once you applied your protective cream, the next thing that you're going to do is apply your cotton. Your cotton should go around the head at least two and a half times. That's one. That's two, and a little half to tuck. All right, now it's time to protect yourself. We do that by putting on our gloves. Now that we have ourselves protected, clients protected, now it's time to put on the solution. We're about to put on the permanent wave solution. We have sectioned the hair, 
we have wrapped the hair on the rods, we put on the protective base, we have on our cotton to protect the client, we have on our gloves to protect ourselves. Now we're at the solution. Now, when you're doing it, you always want to start in the back and then the front. The reason why, if you start in the front, when you get in the back, most likely you need the client to tilt. If you start in the front and they tilt, where's the product going? All in their face. So make sure you start here, around going down, and then the client can tilt back and then you do the top. Let's go. You always wanna hit it on the top and the bottom. The top of the rod, the bottom of the rod or until it's completely saturated. Because I could say top and bottom and it's not completely saturated, it will be an under-processed service. And we don't wanna be under-processed. And we don't wanna be over-processed either. Anytime you have any extra drippage, take a towel, hold it, I've heard questions like, hey, can I just squeeze it everywhere? Only after you take the time to go to every single rod. Otherwise you risk under processing the service. Okay, we're now at the top of the client's head. And I'm getting those last rods going on the top and the bottom. Notice how the client doesn't have any access major drippage. It's all about technique and strategy. Okay, now that I have it everywhere, if I have access, yeah, you can go back through. You can just leave it and toss it, or you can go back through and just make sure You got everything on there. But only after you take the time to go through every single rod. All right, very nice. Extra drippage, client's head is tilted back. Just towel block. All right. All right, now that we have the solution all over the client's head, no extra drippage on the cotton. If there was extra drippage on the cotton, you would want to remove the cotton and put the cotton back that is dry. So replace the cotton. Now we're going to put on a processing cap. And we're going to let it sit on here according to the manufacturer's directions. Manufacturer's directions is 15 to 20 minutes. After that, we're going to test it out and see what we came up with. All right, see you in a bit. All right, so we have the permanent wave processing for the manufacturer's directions, anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, always read. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna carefully take off the processing cap. Be careful because sometimes product can be laying right here in the front, and then it could also be hanging in the back. But for this client here, looks like we did all right. So I'm gonna take off the processing cap and now I'm going to check it. When you check it, it is called a test curl. Come on in. When you do a test curl, you are going to take down the rod and unravel it just a couple of revolutions. When you do that, what are you gonna see? You're gonna see, woo! You're gonna see an indention. When you see an indention like that, that means the curl has processed. All right. 
Make sure to rinse it out when it has processed so you don't over process it. So right now I am about to put this rod back. I'm going to go rinse it out for about five full minutes and I'm going to come back and put on the neutralizer. See you in a bit. All right, so now what we're about to do is put on the neutralizer. We just rinsed it out for five full minutes, making sure all the permanent wave solution is out of the head. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reapply the cotton. We do not have to reapply any protective base. Reapplying the cotton around the hairline just to prevent from extra drippage. In a salon or barbershop environment, you are free to put the neutralizer on while you're at the shampoo bowl. And half to tuck. Remember, 2.5 times around the head should do it. All right, now we're gonna apply the neutralizer the same way we applied the solution. Always do the back first and then move to the top. Okay, we did the back, now let's go to the front. Feel free to grab a towel to catch any extra dripping. Remember your client will have shoulders, so a lot of it will stop at the shoulder area. Tilt my client's head back and we're going to go to the top. She can get everywhere. And tilt. All right, I'm going to let this sit on here for about five minutes. All right, so the neutralizer is neutralizing on the head right now, and now we're gonna start to gently remove the rods. Look at that. Okay. Be sure to make sure those ends are not snagging inside the rods. Just gently remove. All right, taking out the last rods. Being sure not to snag the ends. And I'm just gonna shake it out a little bit. The neutralizer is still in there. Just working it in. Working in the neutralizer. And then you're gonna rinse it out. You're gonna rinse it out with tepid water. There is no time frame that you have to rinse it out for. It's not like the five full minutes when you have the solution. All right, you guys. And this is your permanent wave.